This is going to be a quick example of how to code up an array in JavaScript in an HTML page and then output the contents of the array. Arrays are used really commonly in every kind of programming language. If you've done any other kind of programming in the past, you're probably um, familiar with either the concept of arrays or other languages have the concept of lists and collections you get in the .NET world and other types of things. But it's all just sort of the same idea. You want to have the ability to store a bunch of stuff um, together and then to be able to iterate over it. Iteration means you're going to be going through the list one item at a time and every language has a con uh, some sort of construct for um, being able to iterate over a list or an array. Um, in JavaScript it's pretty basic. You have the notion of an array. Arrays can store elements. Um, elements in an array are numbered starting at zero. So the first element of the array is going to be numbered zero, then one, then two. It's a really important concept because if you try and address the first element in an array, if you use the number one, you've just created what's called an off by one error. And you want to make sure that you don't do that because you then have uh, missed one of the elements of the array and your code has a bug in it. So um, fortunately, there are pretty straightforward code idioms for dealing with iterating over arrays and I will go ahead and start with one of these right now just to give you a sense as to how this works. The text covers um, a bunch of others and you can also ask your instructor for more as well too. Okay, so I started with a HTML page. Um, I cheated a little bit by creating the skeleton of the page before I started recording, so I don't have to type in the whole thing. Um, but I, what I will type in is a variable. We're going to call this people. And I'm going to set this equal to an array initializer, which is the square bracket. And I will add a few elements to this. You can add as many elements as you want to your array. And you can see that the array is a data type. It's a variable like any other variable um, in JavaScript. And I've added three elements to this, John, Jane, and Betty. The indices of the elements in this array are numbered 0, 1, and 2. So if I wanted to access John, it would be element 0. If I wanted to access Jane, it would be element 1. Betty would be element 2. But more often than not, what you want to do is just iterate over the entire contents of the list. Um, the reason why you generally add things to lists like this or to arrays like this um, is so that you can treat them all sort of as a unit um, to do something to each element in the array. And this is what I referred to a second ago as iterating over the array. This will be really familiar to you if you have programmed in any other C style language, including um, C Sharp or Java. The basic premise is exactly the same, um, with a slight variation um, owing to the fact that um, JavaScript does not have strong typing. So you won't be declaring a data type for a counter um, over the array. You'll just be declaring it as a JavaScript variable. So we have this keyword called for, which sets up a loop. The loop is what gives you the ability to do something to each element of the array. So what you're essentially doing when you set up a for loop is you're going to say, okay, for every item in this array or in this other type of data, and you can use for with other stuff we'll talk about later, but for now we're just talking about arrays. For every element in this array, do the following. And so we're going to be setting up a code block. And you could do multiple things if you wanted to um, to each element of the array. For this example, we're going to keep it super simple and just do one thing. So I say var i equals 0. This is a counter variable. i is going to be the thing that is going to determine what element of the array you're on. And um, as we talked about a second ago, you want to start at element 0 if you want to start at the first element of the list. You don't have to start at element 0 if you intentionally want to skip the first element of the list. You could start at 1 or 2 or whatever. But one of the problems you may run into is um, violating the boundaries of the array. Right? The boundaries of the array, the array has three elements, numbered 0, 1, and 2. Um, but if you tried to start a loop starting at element 9, for example, and there was no element 9, 
then you'd have a problem, right? You would, it would actually be an error, it would be a runtime error. Um, so we need to create constructs that will um, ensure that we don't have these errors um, going outside of the boundaries of the array. Um, so the second element of this for loop is an i. This will be a test, right? And what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, for every element in the array, start at zero in the array and keep going until you reach the length of the array. So this is the second part of the counter in the for loop. The first part says where to start, i equals zero, and it also defines the counter variable i. This, by the way, can be anything. You could call this counter if you wanted to, but then you'd have to make sure that you were consistent and call it counter over here, right? Let's go back to calling it i just so I don't get confused, right? Okay, so, so the first part says initialize a counter. The second part says how high to count, right? So i is less than people.length, and then the final item is i plus plus and that is almost always going to say the same thing which is basically increment the counter by one for each time now again this, this doesn't have to say i plus plus if for some reason you wanted to um, visit every other element of the array you could say i equals i plus two or something like that but almost like 99 percent of the time anytime you see one of these for loops um, it's going to be define the counter, set it to zero, define some upper bounds for the counter, which will almost for an array, almost always be the length of the array, and then increment the counter. And that will cause the following code block, which is right here, to be executed once for each element of the array. Okay, now this code can be anything, but for now, let's just keep it really simple and just uh, write out the contents. So I'll say document.write and I have people and then I can use this index. So we say people of I in this case, right? And that's going to write out each of these three names. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go over to the browser and I'm going to load the page into the browser and can you see what happens? It outputted each of the three names to the browser, but it didn't put anything in there that sort of separates them. We were, you might have been expecting that it would um, display each one on its own line, but it doesn't do that, and the reason is because you didn't tell it to, right? Um, you just told it to output the person, right? Um, what if we wanted it to display on a different line? Well, browsers understand HTML, right? So you can go line break, like yay, um, and just concatenate that onto the end of the person's name, resave my code, go back to the browser and refresh, and now you can see that um, because the line breaks are in HTML, it will put the, the break in between each person's name. Um, one final thing before I finish up, and that is the, the real value of arrays is that um, you can add You can add as many things as you want to an array, like that, and the code will always work if it's written correctly, right? You can see if I go back to the browser and refresh, um, you should be able to see that um, the code will continue to work no matter how many elements um, exist in the array, and that's one of the very powerful things about arrays. It's one of the reasons why almost every language implements some kind of array or list type, um, because the notion of having collections or groups of items that you want to work on in tandem um, is very powerful and it's very um, useful. So um, that's how JavaScript does it. We'll look at some other techniques later on for uh, other ways to do this.